let's take a look at question number three. Question number three, part one. We were saying that in order for us to do this particular kind of question, this kind of question where the vectors is not given to us in the numerical coordinates form, but we are just looking at vectors in general. So 9a is asking for the geometric, uh, the geometrical meaning of an expression. We know that this kind of question, they test us in three aspects. The first one is all the dot and cross product algebra. The dot and cross product algebra, as in like, let me just very quickly show you, okay? So we are tested in this kind, okay? All these properties here, we are tested in this kind, all this here. Okay, so for, for, for vectors, we are expecting this kind. And the second kind is going to be the geometrical meaning, geometrical interpretation, which is what we are going to be looking at in 3a. And the third one is uh, by introducing all the geometries. The geometries, you know, like, like points, lines, planes, except that we are not going to be given the coordinates of the geometry. We are not going to be given the coordinates of the points. We are supposed to deal with them as uh, general vectors. Okay, so is, it is usually this three. And for the geometrical interpretation, like for example, this particular question here, like what I was saying, um, this kind of question usually has very little marks. Okay, it depends definitely, but usually it's very little marks. So one advantage that you can you give yourself right to do this kind of question is to just uh, memorize. You know, it is just to memorize all the geometrical interpretation that you have come across, then try to match to something that you have memorized and see whether you can answer it as quickly as possible. So for example, like this particular one, right? Give the geometrical interpretation of modulus of P cross A minus Q. So I, I have memorized one that looks very, very similar to this. Modulus of P cross A minus Q, especially P is given to us as a unit vector, right? Because the modulus of P is equal to one. So P is a unit vector. I've memorized a version of this that is in our outline. Let me show you where it is. That means I'm, I'm triggering myself you know, from, from what I have already memorized. Okay, I'm not trying to deduce, I'm not trying to analyze this much yet because it, it is just a one mark question. So I know there's something that is in our outline that is very similar to this. Let me show you. It is in vectors under cross product. There's one that is very similar. It is this. So I know I've already memorized that if I have a point A, if I have a point O and B here, then this vector is A, this vector here is B. I know that this length here, this length here is modulus of A cross B divided by modulus of B. Okay, I have already memorized this. I don't even want to care about the magic triangle that we have been talking about so much because it is just one mark. It is not very worth it for me to try to derive too much. But no more this one mark from the Hua Chong, from this Hua Chong paper, it's not even easy to get, you know. So, so let, let me try to go through this thought process together with you, okay? I know that it is this, and I've also memorized that this modulus of B here is a scalar quantity. B is a vector, but modulus of B is just a number. So number can be brought in and out of a, of a cross product. Like for example, this six over here, this algebraic property number six, lambda, mu, it can be brought in and out of the cross product, which means that this modulus of B, I can bring it in so that I can have a B over modulus of B, which means that this, which is the shortest possible distance from A to the line OB, is also A cross B hat, where B hat is the unit vector. So we have these two versions here, which I have already memorized. That is why when I look at the situation that is given to me, if I can sort of like match this to what I've already memorized, like here, P is a unit vector. So it looks very similar to this. Then I'm going to start from this. But of course, we need to look at the situation that is given to us. Q is a point that is with a position vector of Q and a line L, which has an equation of R is equal to A plus lambda D. So let me just do a quick sketch. A line L is R is equal to A plus lambda D. And I'm going to call the point A, which, have, which will have the position vector of A as its position vector. So. I have this, and this vector P, P has a modulus of, modulus of P is equal to 1. So it is a unit vector like what we have just mentioned, and it is in the same direction as D. P is a unit vector that is going to be in the same direction as D. 
So P is going to be here. So in fact, right, since P is the unit vector, P is just going to be D divided by modulus of D. So P is actually D hat. Right, this is what the question is trying to hint to us. So whatever that I'm trying to be showing, right, this modulus of P cross Q A minus Q is really giving me this, this um, feel that it looks very, very similar to this. And if you were to ask me, right, if I really don't have time to process this, and I just want to move on from this question number one, or if I try to process and match, and I cannot really tell what is, what is the geometrical meaning of this, I'll probably just whack, you know, the shortest possible distance from Q to the line L. <laughs> I'll probably just do this. Because in here, there is a A, in here, there is a P, which is actually everything about the line. But in the line, there's, I don't see Q. So most likely, I mean, what else can it be, right? It is the shortest possible distance from Q to the line L. But uh, we can definitely try to derive this, uh, you know, going through some simple steps or so. So if I want to try to align this to what I've already memorized, maybe I can shift this forward so that it can become negative of, you know, I will swap the cross product you'll be negative of A minus Q cross P. And I know P is D hat. And this is modulus of, uh, you know, if I have to bring the negative in, negative is a scalar quantity, so I can bring it inside. So it's going to be Q minus A cross B hat. Q minus A and position vector minus the beginning, but, but minus the position vector of the beginning, it is going to be something that is like this. So it will be Q here, then this will be, this will be uh, OQ minus OA, this will be Q, sorry, this is AQ. This will be AQ, vector AQ. Vector AQ is Q minus A. So now I synchronize everything to this, where this, I can even see that this is, sorry, QA cross P, which is a hat, uh, which is d hat. So we have this cross d hat. And what is this? Therefore, it is the shortest possible distance from Q to the line L. Okay, we memorize it so that we can tackle this kind of question as quickly as possible. 3A. 3B, we are facing a scenario that uh, I'm not sure about, about how, how often you see a uh, cosine rule that is within the dot product. But if you were to go to the outline, if you were to go to the outline and you click uh, you know, the video for this dot product here, right? Okay, I actually show also that this can be derived using cosine rule. But this question is interesting because uh, although cosine rule is not very often like discussed in dot product in exams, but this question actually try to lead you to use the cosine rule to prove the dot product equation. So regardless of whether you know how to apply this or not, at least the question is try to be, try to, I mean, at least the, tr the question tried to be fair by giving you a set of instruction. Not the full instruction. That is why we need to try to find ways to piece the missing information together ourselves. We have this vector A and B they are from two adjacent sides of the triangle O, A, B. So we have this. O, A, B. So I guess this is vector A. This is vector B. And the angle that is between A and B, the question says is theta. So here is theta. We are supposed to consider this A minus B dot a minus b. We are supposed to consider this and the cosine rule for the triangle OAB. And you are supposed to show the dot product equation. It is a three, oh, it's a four marks question. So the question gave a set of instruction, but it didn't give everything. And in, I mean, and unless you have already done some cosine rule that is going to be related to dot product before, or you check out the video that is on Achievers TV before, or else this will be a situation which is unfamiliar to most of us. Which means, in order for us to try to get marks, we need to logically take micro steps. 
because we can we know the goal but you know in front in front of us is like one whole huge cloudy mess you know so what we want to do is although i don't know the full strategy of how exactly this can be used but i'm going to take that micro step okay so let's try to take these micro steps together and i want you to adapt and get used to it so that in the exam you are going to do this trial and error and you are comfortable Okay, if you were to look at 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 11 paper, you are, sub, you are going to be seeing questions that are like this. They are really showing us the trend. So, A minus B dot A minus B. What are my options? Because I'm going to be taking micro step. And I'm taking logical steps. I'm not randomly trying, okay? So what are my options? What are my good options? I have two options. I'm going to go back to my outline. I have two options. One is uh, a dot a is equal to modulus of a square. So this dot this is equal to modulus of a minus b square. This is one option. Another option is definitely to make use of number five to sort of like expand the dot product. Okay, I don't know whether I should expand or not. Okay, I also don't know whether I should let this be equal to this or not. I, I don't know which one is going to be better. But the question did tell me that I'm supposed to be making use of the cosine rule. And they didn't exactly tell you how to, what, which cosine rule to form. Because for every triangle, there are three possible cosine rules, right? But with the information that is given to us, I think the cosine rule should be the one that involves theta, correct? So if I were to form the cosine rule that involves theta, then it is going to be AB square is going to be equal to OA square plus OB square minus away 2 times of OA, OB, cosine of the angle in between square. And involving this angle theta is good because to prove the dot product equation, it is going to be involving the angle that is between the two known vectors. Okay, so this seems to be in sync. I've taken some micro steps. I'm, I'm going to take even more steps. Okay? Hopefully, this, this mess, this cloud that is in front of me will disappear. Then I can see my destination. Then I'm going to just hop towards that destination. Uh, A minus B. A minus B is this length here, which synchronized to A minus B. Because this A minus B, this vector itself, this A minus B is BA, vector BA. But since we are talking about just the modulus of it, so it's just the distance. So AB, the distance AB, the length AB is modulus of BA squared. So this length here is modulus of BA. I mean, this length here is modulus of BA, which is this AB. Okay, I think I have taken enough micro step to sort of like get what, what is happening. I'm going to just try a few more because I'm probably in the correct direction already. This over here, I'm going to re-express it as modulus of A square plus modulus of B square minus 2 times modulus of A modulus of B cosine theta. And this over here, I cannot possibly just leave it as it is because I have another option that I've not executed. So I'm going to expand this, it will be a dot a, which is going to be modulus of a square. This, this, it will be minus a dot b. This, this, minus b dot a. This, this, it will be plus modulus of b square. a dot b and b dot a, they are basically the same thing. So we have a modulus of a square minus two times of a dot b plus modulus of b square. This is going to be modulus of a square plus modulus of b square minus 2 mod a mod b cosine theta. And since this and this can be cancelled, this and this can be cancelled, I'm going to be just left with this to be equal to this. And minus 2 can also be divided across the, inequal, uh, across the equal sign. So I'm going to be left with just uh, a dot b. This is equal to modulus of a modulus of b cosine theta. And for this particular kind of question, in order for us to be comfortable enough to do all this small little trial and error here and there, and we are also expecting this style in our A level, please don't forget on the Achievers TV under the place where under the page where you see all the playback videos of the last few, I mean of all the past tuition session, all the way below there's a worksheet for vectors. 
and I, I think I term it as the non-column vector worksheet. So please remember that worksheet, it, is, it consists of all of this, I mean, it consists of 20 plus this kind of question, where it is all the non-coordinate geometry kind of question. Okay, it is all A, B, C kind of question. This kind of question, in order for you to adapt to it, practice. Okay, of course, you need to think here, but at least practice first, so that, so that you don't, you are not um, intimidated when you are seeing all this A dot B, B dot A, you know, A cross B kind of thing. Okay, Sri said something which, uh, which other students also mentioned in the other class. Sri is saying, right, is it possible for us to, to say... Uh, Sri, I assume you are talking about, um, you are asking for the first part, part 3A, right? So, yeah, okay, sorry, you are saying 3A. So, uh, Sri says, okay, what if we were to describe the geometrical meaning of this as the area of parallelogram that is bounded by P and the vector A minus Q? If you were to ask me, I will say no. Okay, I will not go for area of parallelogram, although this synchronized to area of parallelogram uh, formula, but I'll say no this time. Why? If I were to ask myself very honestly, if this question were to not appear as a practice question, if this question were to appear in the A-level, and it happened to be set as badly as this, where they are not clear enough, okay? <laughs> if this were to appear in the A-level, and I think sometimes A-level did purposely do something that is like this. I think probably that's why Hua Chong tried this. They, they set questions that are not exactly the clearest, and they just want to see how students react. So if this question were to appear in the A-level, do I dare to put down this as the area of parallelogram and ignoring the line L? Ignoring the fact that P is in the direction of D? Do I dare to do this in the A-level? Although it is just one mark, but one mark in the A-level is different from one mark that is in the prelim. It is more valuable. Do I dare to do this? I don't dare. I will definitely try to see how P, Q, A, L, D, they are all related in my discussion on the geometrical meaning. That is, that is why if I were to try to think of this and simulate it as an A-level question, I would probably not put it as an area of parallelogram. And that changed my perspective. Because it is not about just answering. You know, it is about you know, the, the, whether number one, you're answering according to what the examiner is looking for. And number two, it is also about the journey you know, before you get the final answer. So, uh, yeah, I mean, okay, sorry, I talk so much, but it's just that. Although theoretically, three, if you were to say this 3A as area of parallelogram, theoretically it is correct, but uh, I don't think I will take the risk to answer it as area of parallelogram in the exam.